AMD just confirmed the RX 8800 and 8600 series GPUs, and it's even better than we thought. But before I get to that, game requirements are getting completely out of hand, Intel officially announced their next-gen GPUs, and NVIDIA's crushing it. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. First up for today, system requirements for PC games have gotten completely out of hand. Case in point, the requirements for the upcoming Indiana Jones and the Great Circle game just dropped, and wow, are a lot of people flat not going to be able to play this. For starters, as you can see right here, it requires GPU hardware ray tracing, and that's for the low preset, meaning hardware ray tracing is required across the board, which is why you need either an RTX 2060 Super or RX 6600 GPU at a minimum, and that's for low 1080p, 60fps, but it gets even worse. Besides the typical at this point, but still absurd requirement of 120 gigabytes, it also requires it to be an SSD. Then for the CPU, you need either an i7 10700K or Ryzen 5 3600. When we move to the recommended settings, you can see that that memory requirement goes up to 32 gigabytes of system memory, and the GPU needed is either an RTX 3080 Ti 12 gigabytes or a Radeon RX 7700 XT. Then, if you want to play at 60 FPS at 4K, you're going to need either an RTX 4080 or RX 7900 XT. But that's just for regular ray tracing settings. If you want the full ultra ray tracing, which is almost certainly path tracing, you're going to need an RTX 4090. Hold on though, because that's not it. You also have to use both frame generation and super resolution. In fact, all of these require both frame generation and upscaling tech. So yeah, if you want to play at the highest settings, you'll have to fork out thousands for a new system. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm definitely for raising the bar with graphics fidelity and improving graphics in general, but lately it almost feels more like game developers just aren't optimizing things properly. In this case, it may just be the ray tracing and path tracing, but if it requires upscaling and the best GPU, I'd argue the hardware just isn't there yet. And next up for today, the leaks were spot on, as Intel just announced their next-gen Battlemage GPUs. But first, I just found the ultimate way to display all the sensor data from my PC components. I'm talking CPU temps, clocks, memory speed, GPU voltage, anything. It's something I've been wanting for years. So when G-Skill discussed sponsoring this video so I could talk about it, you better believe I was on board. It's called the Widgy Dash PC Command Panel and it's the perfect way to check on your PC health at a glance. No need to stop what you're doing to pull up a monitoring app, you don't have to buy an expensive case that you'll likely outgrow eventually anyway, and the best part is that it's made for this, which means you can pair it with Ada64 and create custom displays for all that data. G-Scale already has some nice looking ones too, plus it's a touch screen so you can even use it to control your PC with things like playback controls, volume, open apps, and a ton more. Oh, and because because it uses USB instead of HDMI, you won't have to worry about your cursor accidentally going over to it. This really is the perfect solution, so check out my link in the description to get yours. And a huge thanks to G-Skill for sponsoring this video. Now back to the story, as you can see here, Intel officially unveiled the B580 Battlemage GPU. Like the leak suggested, they also announced the B570, but they just don't have a limited edition model from Intel like the B580. Either way, as you can see, the card does look pretty nice, it's a dual fan design with a single 8 pin connector. When it comes to specs, like I said, the leaks were spot on, and if you like to be one of the first to know about PC hardware releases, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Melt. Moving back to the specs, like I said, the leaks were spot on. Starting things off, we have the B580, which comes with 20 XE cores, and then the B570 comes with just 18. And of course, that parallels perfectly with the ray tracing units of the B580 being 20, and then the B570 being 18. When it comes to clocks, the B580, at least this is for the 
base models, the B580 comes at 2670 megahertz, and the B570 comes in at 2500 megahertz. Then, just like what I said, the leaks being spot on yet again, the B580 comes with 12 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory set to a 192-bit bus, while the B570 comes with 10 gigabytes with a 160-bit bus. When it comes to TDP, or in this case total board power, the B580 comes in at 190 watts, while the B570 comes in at 150. As far as the power connector, both of these, like you saw in that last one, it comes with one 8-pin connector, but in fact, both of these are set to come with one 8-pin connector, and they're based on PCI Express 4.0 times 8. And then for the display configuration, it looks like potentially for all of these cards, we have three DisplayPort 2.1 ports and one HDMI 2.1 port. When it comes to performance, you can see that the ARC B580 is set to just be 10% faster versus the RTX 4060. Now, that may not sound all that great, but it's actually not too too bad i mean it's not all that impressive but especially when we're talking the mid-range but i'll get to that part in just a second of course one of the big reasons for this is the fact and they point this out that the b580 comes with 12 gigabytes of gddr6 while the rtx 4060 only comes with eight moving right along we have the b580 versus the current gen arc a750 and as you can see it's 24 percent faster here at least overall obviously some of these it gets quite a bit of a jump and then some aren't much of a jump at all for example you can see in fortnite the new gpu gets a huge boost in performance while in some of these other games like League of Legends, it's pretty much identical. Finally, when it comes to more of a comparative view versus AMD and then Nvidia, you can see we have the Arc B580, which gets up to 32% faster rasterization over the RTX 4060 and just a little bit less, but still faster than the RX 7600. Then they're talking 25% faster in ray tracing versus the RTX 4060. And then even faster than that, of course, versus the RX 7600. But the big kicker here is the fact that these are set to release for $249. And of course, if all of this rings true, that's definitely not a bad price. And when it comes to the release, the B580 is set for release December 13th. So we're talking just a couple weeks from now, not long at all. And like I said, that's $250. And then the B570, that one is releasing a bit later on January 16th of next year for $219. Ultimately, I would definitely argue you should wait for third party reviews, but like I said, if this holds up being true, it's really not bad. But of course, time, as always, will tell. And next up, NVIDIA has become the absolute market leader when it comes to AI accelerators. It's why their stock has gone through the roof, it's why it feels like pretty much everyone else is simply playing catch up. Well, in a new report originally from the Taiwan Economic Daily and later reported by WCCF Tech, NVIDIA's next-gen Rubin architecture is actually ahead of schedule. As you can see right down here, it says the Rubin lineup, initially scheduled for 2026, has now been pushed back to mid-2025, meaning NVIDIA is ahead of schedule by a whopping six months. Basically, with NVIDIA's newest Blackwell GPU, just about nothing compares to it, really at all. And if this is right, NVIDIA is now six months ahead of schedule for their follow-up, which means anyone hoping to challenge NVIDIA are in some serious trouble. And lastly for today, we recently saw a leak claiming some wild stuff about AMD's next-gen RX 8000 GPUs. I'm talking the 8800 XT is set to be as much as 45% faster in ray tracing versus the 7900 XTX while consuming a whopping 25% less power. Well, it's looking like those really could be accurate because AMD just confirmed the fact that the RX 8800 and RX 8600 are in fact coming. As you can see right down here, this was actually mentioned within the Rockham library from AMD, meaning this is actually code from AMD that they're entering into it, and you can see that they added support for the GFX 
12, RX 8600, and RX 8800. Not only that, but AMD themselves just announced that they are going to be at CES next year. You can see press event on Monday, January 6th, and it says that they're excited to share the stage with some incredible special guests as we unveil our next generation of innovation across gaming. Yes, AI, PC, and commercial, but also gaming. And the news still doesn't stop there because as you can see right here, this was found on Seasonic's wattage calculator for their PSUs, where you can see that they do in fact list an RX 8800 XT. Not only that, but they list it as coming with a TDP of 220 watts, which is actually even better than that 25% reduction versus the 7900 XTX. So, perhaps, especially if this ray tracing part is right, which it very well could be. Don't forget that we've already gotten confirmation the next-gen ray tracing is really gonna get a big boost thanks to the PS5 Pro. So a 45% boost in ray tracing really isn't all that surprising, but if it's able to do that while getting even less power consumption than that 25%, well, let's just say it's set to be one impressive GPU. So while that does it for today, which RX 8000 GPU are you most excited for? Let me know down in the comments below. And don't forget to check out G-Skill's new Widgie-PC Commander down in the description below. And as always, have a great day.